Don't need to be giving you the money shot there. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crown and Comments, March 2023. And tonight we're going to talk about airbags. We're going to talk about uh, helmets and shoes. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Your comments that you've given me on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And we're going to talk about subscriptions. So, buckle up. This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Okay, for those of you that are new here, if there is anybody new here, I'm Cruiseman, and this is Crown and Comments, and that's basically our monthly show where I take some of your comments from YouTube, Facebook, emails, other areas, uh, Instagram, and I respond to them. But what uh, I invite you to do is get your favorite adult beverage, sit back and relax, and just enjoy the show. Uh, it's mostly about motorcycles, but not always. Sometimes I get off on a tangent. I might talk about some popular or other unpopular subjects. I've got my MacBook Pro here with uh, some of the comments that I've picked out to talk about. I've got my Crown Royal, which is kind of my go-to evening cocktail. I'm not a, by the way, I'm not a heavy drinker. I just want you to know. Uh, I usually have one of these a night. It's not like I drink this at three in the afternoon. Well, wait a minute. Sometimes I do drink it at three in the afternoon. It's not like I drink it at eight o'clock in the morning. Okay, I'm not there yet. Let's go ahead and get to some of your comments before I do. Um, actually, I, let's just get right into it because some of this is old business. I put those kind of at the top and I wanted to get that out of the way first in my last, I think it was the last crown in comments or maybe the one right before that. I can't remember <clears throat> where I talked about the airbag airbag model gold wings and I made some comment about airbags not necessarily being as effective I, I don't remember my exact comments but I caught some hell from you guys on that maybe maybe justifiably so I immediately got some comments from people who who uh, I'll just read one of them to you this is from Lewis Bergener I hope I'm saying that right, Louis or Luis. Uh, dear cruise man, I have to disagree with you about the airbag. The airbag saved my life. I had a head-on collision in England. Uh, motorbike and car both totaled. I had no injuries. Anyway, he goes on. I, I, it's a long message. Basically, you get the idea. The airbag model Goldwing saved his life. I got another uh, email with pictures, uh, and I'll put them on the screen, from Ron Hogel, who uh, had a story of another guy who was on an airbag model, and it saved his life. Now, let me just try to clarify my thoughts on the airbag model Goldwing. I was really kind of referring more to airbags in cars, but an airbag on a Goldwing, my point was that the only time it would be effective is if you hit something straight on. Uh, if somebody hits you from the side or they rear-end you, the airbag is not going to help you. Um, that you know, that, Granted, that's my opinion, okay? That's it's, it's all it is. Uh, obviously, there are some cases here. And I have some friends that have airbag model Goldwings. They're firm believers. And so... Certainly no criticism if somebody wants to have an airbag model. I think it probably is, you know, surely it's safer because if you did have that type of collision or if you ran into the back of a car or something like that, it would provide some protection. I think my concern with any of these safety devices like airbags, ABS brakes, um, it doesn't matter what it is. Even the flashing lights. Let's talk about the headlight flashers that flash the modulators or taillight modulators. I I don't think, I think the tendency, and I think the same is true in autos, car, automotive, uh, automotive also, is it 
it makes gives people a false sense of security. It makes them think they don't have to be as good a rider because they're protected somehow. Maybe helmets do the same thing and gloves. I don't know. Uh, but nothing is going to compensate for poor riding skills, uh, poor precautionary measures, you know, taking the proper precautions. You know, most motorcycle accidents, I believe, I think I had this conversation with Dale. In fact, Dale kind of took issue with my comment about airbags. Um, but I believe Dale confirmed this, that most motorcycle accidents or fatalities, I'm not sure which one or maybe both, are single rider. There, there's no other vehicle involved. They either run off the road or they run up a curb or they hit another stationary object, something like that. And I'm sure a lot of these are, 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 are avoidable with proper riding technique, proper skill, preparation, maybe proper gear. I mean, every one of us have seen videos on YouTube. They shouldn't even allow them to be on there. But the uh, these kids that are doing the wheelies, going 60 miles an hour down the highway, you know, that's just insanity. And I'm sure there's a lot of people killed on motorcycles doing stupid crap like that. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thoughts on the airbag. Um, I'm not disputing that the airbags can be effective on a Goldwing. Uh, I just was trying to clarify that it's primarily for a head-on type collision. Okay, let's move on. This next message is from Roy Barons, and he has a, uh, a white 2018 Goldwing as well. It's a very lengthy email, so I, I can't fit it all on the screen, but I'll, I'll summarize what he's referring to. Starts his Goldwing, and he hears a clicking sound on the right side, down on the engine on the right side under the valve cover. Took his bike back to the dealer. Basically, bottom line is they can't figure out what's wrong. I think he contacted American Honda. And, of course, you know where that went. Nowhere. So, um, Roy, I will tell you, and anybody else, uh, this is a common issue. I, I have it on my bike. I have the clicking, uh, especially when the engine's cold. Uh, it seems like as it warms up, that goes away. So, that is a known uh, characteristic, maybe. I don't know that it, it's evidence of an issue or a problem. That could just be a characteristic of this new engine, this new 2018 plus engine. But my engine clicks on the right hand side when it's cold. Um, and he called it clattering or knocking or tapping sound coming from the right engine valve cover area. I'll just ask everybody out there, if you ride a Goldwing, 2018 or greater, uh, have you noticed this? Have you noticed this tapping sound, this clicking sound when your engine's cold on the right-hand side? I certainly have it on mine, and I suspect most people do. And I don't know that it is an indication of a serious issue. I did get another email this week from Robert Bronner, who emails me, messages me quite frequently. I think I've posted some of his messages in the past, maybe in the last uh, episode. But he's the one that made me aware of this video that was done by Goldwing Docs and where they're talking about, and I'll put a link to that in the description of the video, where they're talking about the DCT, the DCT, I should say, not the DCT transmission, that's redundant, but the DCT and how the clutch uh, got burned up. Guy bought a brand new DCT and he was doing a lot of slow parking lot maneuvers and burned up the clutch. Honda replaced it under warranty. He even, I think, ended up getting a brand new 2022 model or 21, I'm not sure. And uh, within just a few weeks, like three weeks, uh, he had burned up the clutch in the second one and Honda refused to honor the warranty on the second one and when he made him aware that he was doing these low speed uh, you know like you would do in an MSF course where you're going around pylons things like that low speed maneuvers 
uh, that it can burn up the clutch. Now this is true of a, a standard motorcycle as well. Any motorcycle where you're slipping the clutch, you did that excessively for a long period of time, that clutch is going to heat up and it's going to cause excess wear and it could eventually damage the clutch, obviously. Uh, but on a DCT, you don't really know when the clutch is engaging, disengaging, slipping, because that's all being done by the ECU or by the computer. If you do a lot of low-speed maneuvering like this, uh, probably a DCT is not the best bike to have in that circumstance, because be advised that if you do burn up the clutch because of this, Honda is not going to replace it. They, I think they've made that pretty clear now. So I find it interesting that Honda would not at least inform people when they buy a DCT that this is a limitation of the transmission. And because this is not an uncommon thing for motorcycle riders to do, especially if you take an MSF course and you do it in your on your Goldwing, you're going to be asked to make these low speed maneuvers, turns, you know, where maybe you're only going five or six miles an hour. You know, I've heard the same thing about DCT transmissions in cars, that if you're in stop and go traffic for a long period of time, just stop and go traffic can really cause a lot of wear and tear on that on that clutch in that DCT. But certainly we know that that is the case on a Goldwing. So be advised, uh, be cautious. I wouldn't do too many slow, low speed maneuvers without stopping periodically, turning the engine off, letting it cool off, letting everything cool down. And uh, anyway, that's it. If you've had this problem, put it in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on it? Not a big issue for me because I try not to ride a lot in stop and go traffic. I have been in situations where it's unavoidable. And what I try to do is if I come to a stop and I see that the traffic's not going to be moving for 30 seconds or a minute, I actually put the bike in neutral and just wait until the traffic starts moving again. Then I put it back in drive and go. So this next comment was on my last crown in comments and it's from jeff markham i'll just read a little bit of his message then i'll give you my response he said you made two incorrect statements with respect to youtube ads first the youtube creator gets to dictate whether or not the ads are skippable or non-skippable youtube does not randomly select this also the youtube creator gets to select the type of ads for each individual video. I'm not aware of that. I've never been, I, I, I didn't know you could do that. Um, or you can select those options as a default for every video. The YouTube creator does not get a small portion of the ad revenue. The YouTube creator gets 55% and YouTube gets 45%. Uh, first of all, he's absolutely correct on at least two or three of these points. And I, I think I got confused. Maybe the crown got to me in the last video. I, I think I had been talking about shorts, the short videos. And I probably in my head thought I was referring to the shorts videos where we don't have as much control over the monetization of those videos as we as he has correctly stated we do on our other youtube videos the long form videos like you're watching now i'm not aware of being able to select the types of ads uh, there may be a way to do that maybe i did it a long time ago and just forgot but i'm just not aware of it oh, i forgot uh, he I'm, I'm sure he's right he obviously knows what he's talking about if I, I didn't mean to mislead anybody, and if I did, I apologize. So thank you, Jeff, for clarifying that so that everybody now knows how this works. OB1 said, I hate the YouTube shorts. I refuse to waste my time watching them. Well, OB, I, you know, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Nobody, they're certainly not forced on anyone. I don't make a habit of watching YouTube shorts. Uh, they're pretty much designed to be watched on your phone. And sometimes if I'm sitting in an airport or I'm just somewhere where I've got some time to kill, maybe at a doctor's office, 
that's a point where I might flip through and watch some of these YouTube shorts or some uh, Instagram reels. That's their term for this short form video. So, okay. Thanks, OB. Let me know that. I appreciate that. Jeff Trip 1100 says, Hey, cruise man, where are the GPS updates that Honda promised us? Well, this kind of gets back to our shorts issue because I just released a short video this week where I did uh, talk about the latest Honda navigation update for 2023. And you can now download that update and install it on your 2018 or greater Honda Goldwing. Now, I had some other people email me or comment, you know, what does this update actually entail? As far as I can tell, it's basically just the maps. There are no improvements. There are no feature changes to, that I can tell in the GPS navigation system itself. It's simply an update to the maps. But it's been a couple of years since we've received one, so it's good that they did update the maps. Old Biker asked me, how does the thanks thing work? I guess I'm wondering how the money part of it works. Oh boy, once again, I my memory is failing me as far as the, the split of how YouTube splits it up between us. I think it's a 70-30 split, but I'm not sure. And for those of you that aren't, aren't familiar with thanks, uh, it's YouTube's uh, for lack of a better term, we're going to call it a gratuity. Uh, let's say that you see a video of mine or somebody else on YouTube, and it really helped you out. It gave you some good information. Uh, you feel like it was valuable, and you wanted to express your appreciation for that video with that YouTube creator. Well, underneath most videos, not everybody signs up for this option, but underneath a lot of videos, you'll see a little button that says thanks. And if you click on it, it will give you the opportunity to send that creator uh, a monetary uh, tip, I guess you could call it. Or just, you know, it could be a $2, $3, $5, $10. I think I got a $50 one one time from somebody. And now I think they go all way up in amounts. You can tip pretty much as much as you want now. But it, that's what it is. That's what thanks is. It's, it's a way for you to thank a YouTube creator for something that they've delivered that you found to be of value. And as far as I know how it works is that the, you set up your account with YouTube. Uh, you have a credit card on file. It's probably done through Google Pay or Google Payments, if I remember correctly. And then uh, you just click the thanks button and they will deduct that money. If it's $10 or $20 or $5, they'll deduct that from your credit card. It'll get charged on your credit card. And then I believe the YouTube creator gets 70% of that and YouTube gets 30% for handling it and dealing with all the transactions. I think that's right. If I'm not, I'm sure my good friend Jeff... Well, make sure to let me know what the actual uh, sp spread is on the sharing of that. So anyway, that's how Thanks works. DZY Dean, I'm not sure if that's pronounced Dizzy Dean or just DZY Dean, said, Is it me or does this guy look and sound like Trey Gowdy? And he put kind of a smiley face thing at the end. I don't know if he's serious or not, but I think he's talking about me. And I don't think I look anything like Trey Gowdy. I wish I looked like Trey Gowdy. Uh, I didn't think I sounded like Trey Gowdy. He's kind of got that North Carolina accent going. Or is it South Carolina? I can't remember. But uh, anyway, I'll I'll take it as a compliment. Anything that anybody says I look like somebody other than who I am, I consider to be a compliment, Okay. Jeremy Ostrom said, would you happen to know, and he's referring to the video on the flagpoles from Show Chrome. He said, do you, do you know what the thread size is? I already have the mount from Goldstrike, and they list the threads as a one quarter 20 bolt. Well, I just happen to have, they're still here in the studio. 
I have not measured the threads. I was intending to do that. Let me take it out of the... This has a female thread in the base, so this is going to screw down onto a male thread similar to this. Now this on top does look like 1 quarter 20. Some 1 quarter 20 like tripod mounts. This is a tripod mount that's 1 quarter 20. And um, let's see, does that go in there? I don't know. It's a little tight, but I don't think it is. It's probably a metric. The base, no, the base is definitely larger than 1 quarter 20. This does come with its own mounting hardware, and I, I don't have it up on the screen yet. I'll let me pull it up. Pocono Survival asked, it might help if you showed how it's mounted. Some people thought this may be mounted with double-sided adhesive tape, and it does not. Pull this out here, and I'll show you real quick. So basically, what you have is this mounting base right here. This is the flat black model, and this is for the 2021 Goldwing. Sorry. It comes with this Allen bolt. I do not know the size. And that is going to mount up from the bottom like this. And then your flagpole will screw down on top of this. And you then would position this. This is going to mount to the side of your trunk. Two screws. And there's a metal plate that goes on the inside. You do need to remove your trunk panels to install this because you have to drill two holes in the side of your trunk panel. My maintenance video series shows you how to remove those trunk panels on anything from a 2018 all the way through to a 2023 right now. If it's 2024, maybe they'll be the same. And then there is a little metal backing plate just to add strength. And then basically, you'll position this so that it will, if I'm mounting it on the left side of the motorcycle, I'd want this to fold forward like this. This is being the front of the bike. I can lower it in this position. When I want to fly the flag, I just raise it up like this. And this is pretty stiff, and it can be tightened. The reason you would fold that forward if you're using a motorcycle cover, uh, this could puncture that cover or make it impossible to put the cover on. If you fold it down, now you can fit your motorcycle cover on. So anyway, that's how it mounts to the bike. There is also some double-sided adhesive, but I would not advise mounting this to your motorcycle with only double-sided adhesive. You definitely would want to use the screws that come in the kit as well. I have a, uh, an official announcement to make. Forgive me for speaking in the uh, third person. But Cruise Man's an idiot. Now, a couple of you did email or message me and, and suggested that I look into this, and I just didn't do it. If you remember in my last video, it was either the last video, I think it was one of my trunk swap videos, where I showed you all the hassle I had to go through to get that foam seal around that trunk insert. And I actually ordered three different sizes of foam, trying to get the right one. And of course, it was the third and last one that I ordered that fit. But I think I spent $40 on foam. And, you know, I had to go through all this, you know, gyration of getting the foam to fit. And a couple of you did say, why don't you check with Honda and see if they sell that foam? And I'm thinking... Why would somebody suggest that? There's no way Honda's going to sell that little foam strip. Sure enough, I'm on Partzilla a couple days ago. I go into the OEM to look up something to do with the trunk, and I see it. And there it is. They actually sell that little piece of foam for like six bucks. I could have ordered the foam from Partzilla and saved myself about $30, not to mention having to worry with it and hassle with it and wait an extra week to get the foam in. I'm just not that smart. I didn't even take the time to think, because it just never occurred to me that Honda would sell that foam as a separate item, but they do. This Now we're getting to the heart of the show. I got an email 
a few days ago from a good friend of mine who also has a 2022 airbag model Goldwing. And he was making me aware of the new Pack Talk Custom. And for some reason, I had not yet got my email from Cardo regarding this new Pack Talk Custom. I'm, sur I'm sure some of you have already received this. You know, I've been a, a Cardo fan for, for many years. I use the Pack Talk Bold, I use the Pack Talk Black. Now, I also use the Senna because I'm using the new Senna helmet right now, the Senna Impulse helmet. And I like both of them. They both, I think, have their advantages and disadvantages. But I got to say, Cardo's doing something. I just, I just can't, I can't go there. Their new Pack Talk Custom comes with a subscription model where they expect you to pay so much a year on three different levels for various services that they can turn on or off based on your subscription. And I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do it. I can't promote it. I just, I can't, I do not like subscriptions. I, I think it's a flawed model. I think it's a little unfair to customers. I've got so many subscriptions now that I don't want to have to keep up with. And you know, Adobe started this crap a few years ago with Photoshop and everybody else has kind of glommed onto this model of trying to get you to subscribe to everything. But right now, anyway, with Cardo, I have a choice. I can buy a Senna and I don't have to subscribe. And if you want a Cardo, I would consider if they still sell the Pack Talk Bold and Pack Talk Black or whatever, go to one of these that doesn't have a subscription. That's just me. That's just me. How do you feel about subscription? And they they come at three different levels. I think it is. Let me look. I've got the photo right here. Okay, the first level they call silver. It's uh, twenty bucks a year, basically. The second level is gold, and it's thirty dollars a year. And the platinum is the top level, and it's forty dollars a year. Now that's on top of the two sixty nine that you've paid for the communicator. So if you and your wife, or you and your buddy, if two, if you buy two communicators, let's say you and your wife ride together. You're not only going to pay over $500 for the two communicators, you're going to be paying $80 a year for the subscription. I'm sorry. I, 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 I have a problem with this. Do any of you have a problem with this? I do not like subscriptions. And again, Cardo has been very good to me. They've been, you know, they've supported us by sending us units to review and test. And, and I've, been good to Cardo, too. I've sold a lot of Cardo units over the years to those of you that watch my channel. I've done a lot of reviews of their products, and so it's been a good synergistic uh, thing, but I, I just can't, I just can't do it. I cannot, I can't buy into this whole subscription thing. Not, not on something like this. And they're starting to do this crap with cars. New cars are coming out with the same thing. Mercedes has a car that they'll sell you, and I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing the numbers here, but when you drive it off the lot, it's, say, 300 horsepower. But if you want 400 horsepower, you have to pay a subscription. You have to pay so much a year, and they unlock the ECU to allow that additional horsepower. That's bullshit, in my opinion. I just, I'm sorry. That's unfair. You're you're basically paying $100,000 for something that it's just a money suck for them to suck money out of you from then on for, and who, what other features are they going to start turning off and you have to pay to turn on? I have a problem with this. Um, do you have a problem with this? Uh, am I the only one? Am I the only one that gets offended with this whole subscription model. I think they're taking advantage. You know, these communicators are probably only good for two or three years anyway before the battery shits the bed. So not only are you paying $269 probably every two or three years because you have to get the new battery and you can't replace the battery. They're not replaceable batteries. These are wired in like an iPhone. Everything is, is just, you just have to buy a new one. 
But on top of that, they want to subs want you to subscribe. So I'm sorry. I just don't I don't like it. That's my rant for the month of March. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about crown and comments in general in the comment section down below. Put your comments in on my videos. Uh, pretty soon I'll have a new video in the next few days where I'm going to do a long-term review update on the Senna Impulse helmet. I've spent a lot of time with it. I'm also going to, in that same video, I'm going to talk about the Chronox sneakers, these shoes that I, I talked about a few weeks ago. I've worn them a few times. I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like about them. Tell you what I like and don't like about the Senna helmet, too. That is crown and comments. Seem like there's one more thing that I needed to tell you about. Ah, I know what it was. Uh, for those of you that have my Honda Goldwing maintenance videos for the 2018 plus Honda Goldwing, I just today put out a brand new video that shows how to remove the trunk on your 2018 Goldwing. So if you're thinking about turning it into a bagger model, getting that little body kit from Honda, or if you're thinking about, like me, swapping your 2018, 2019, 2020 trunk for the larger 2021 trunk, you're going to have to know how to remove the trunk. And this video will go into great detail on all the steps you need to do to remove that trunk. Now, there will be a part two video I'll be editing in the next few days, and I'll have it up probably by next weekend, uh, that talks about installing the new trunk. I'll cover all the details on that. So it'll be a two-part video series. It is on my Goldwing maintenance video series. Thank you, by the way, to all of you that have purchased those videos because it does support this channel. And it's a, a huge part of supporting this channel. We don't make enough on YouTube to support what we do here uh, at Cruise Man's Garage. So thank you for those of you that support the channel through purchasing those videos. There is a spring sale going on right now, but it ends on the, I believe it ends on the 28th of the month. So you can save 20% on my maintenance videos. Uh, you have to use promo code SPRING. We do this every March. And for those of you that, if you just bought a new Goldwing, now's the time to get your maintenance video series because you're going to save over $1,000 a year in maintenance costs, what you would pay a dealer just to do regular maintenance items. These videos will show you how to do it. I think there will be 80 videos in the series once I release the next video. And you can save 20%. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Thanks again for joining me. I will see you on the next Crown and Comments. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up. And remember, no matter what kind of motorcycle you ride, ride often but ride safe.